his 15th question. Can you explain what Stan Tenen is talking about? Is there a way to simplify his work for a general audience? And I say, yes. His explanations are already simple enough for a general audience. Consider his model of the Shushan flower. It is based on Buckminster Fuller's model of a truncated cube octahedron shape a version of one of the 16 Archimedean solids or irregular polytopes formed by combining the three basic polygons of two dimensions, the triangle, the square, and the pentagon. The platonic solids are simply the regular polytopes formed by uniform combinations of these shapes, the tetrahedron of triangles, the cube of squares, and the dodecahedron of pentagons, for example. So, in short, Buckminster Fuller discovered certain unique properties of this particular shape, the truncated cube octahedron, and then Stan Tenen took this shape and used it as a lattice-like manifold model he then placed labels onto. This practice is called doing Kabbalah, generally as one can assign any number of related traits or correspondences onto a lattice-like manifold model, such as the tree of life diagram. Instead of the tree of life shape alone, however, Tenen's works expanded to include other shapes for his diagrams as well, such as the Shushan flower model, based on Bucky Fuller's truncated cube octahedron shape. The labels Tenen applied to this Shushan flower model, then, were continuing to honor Kabbalah as an originally Hebrew tradition, certain letters from passages in the Torah's book of Genesis. So, just like the 4D tesseract lattice of the Tree of Life, the Shushan flower of Tenen and his Maru Foundation is an example of what he called a geometric metaphor of life. The Torah, Tenen proves, is replete with such possible patterns in its texts, and this demonstrates what he believed was a preternatural level of intelligent design in the Torah's Hebrew composition. Thus, it was written more than merely by flawed men, but was deeply inspired by a higher cause. And he's not wrong. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of hidden codes peppered throughout the Bible. Most are simply numerical, but many are alphanumeric and require using gematria to find. Even Jesus spoke in parables that concealed multiple possible meanings simultaneously. And even the Greek and Roman authors of the New Testament Gospels were long schooled in number-based encryption systems like Gematria. I even use some of these sort of encryption systems in my own Cheshire Sam novel series to take a cipher message and hide it in plain sight inside the text. 